Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Gary Orner. I'm the owner of Orner Exotics and we're going to be going through some steps that's needed for you to breed leopard geckos even if it's on a small scale or a large scale. And the whole thing that we're going to be trying to do here is to get you past step one so we can get into the meat of the subject and picking out your geckos and breeding your geckos and going through incubation, egg pooling, ovulation, pairing, all that stuff is coming up in future episodes. But today we're going to be talking about a few things that you need to ask yourself and some equipment that you're going to need before you even think about purchasing a leopard gecko or you could even use this just for purchasing a leopard gecko or breeding leopard geckos so the very first thing that i tell everyone when they say hey i would like to breed leopard geckos i say do you have an outlet to sell them do you have expos you're going to be going to? Do you have a website? Do you have a pet store that's going to be buying from you? Are you going to wholesale to another breeder? Is that breeder willing to purchase from you? <clears throat> These are questions that you need to ask yourself before you even think about breeding leopard geckos because they are going to produce and you're going to have babies and you're going to have to have an outlet for them babies or you're just going to be overwhelmed with leopard geckos so that's probably the most important thing that i can tell you right now is do you have an outlet now i'm going to tell you this if you got expos that you go to every month or every two months every three months and you see five leopard gecko breeders there you probably i got an itch on my foot sorry <laughs> you probably aren't going to want to um breed leopard geckos and take them to them expos <clears throat> because you're going to be competing with a lot of other people and you won't move just with that you're going to want multiple multiple outlets so i suggest facebook even though you cannot sell on facebook you can still advertise that you are a breeder a website you want expos you're going to be using places like morph market king snake fauna classifieds these are all outlets to sell your geckos and that if you use these outlets you're going to have to get you know informed about shipping and we're going to be getting into that into a later episode so the first thing is to plan out your outlets you want to know that before going in because it's going to determine how many geckos you want to produce how many animals you're going to get to breed um, what projects you're going to get into it, it really defines a lot of other things <clears throat> The second thing you're going to want to ask yourself is this. Do you have the time to dedicate to breed leopard geckos? Maybe a pair won't take up as much time, but you can ask any breeder out there. It's going to grow. You're going to get more geckos. You're going to produce geckos. You're going to hold back geckos. You're going to buy this gecko. You're going to start this project. Two, three, four geckos turns into 10, 15, 20 geckos very, very quickly. And 10 to 15 females can produce a lot of animals very quickly. So you want to be able to talk to yourself, talk to your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whomever you're with, and say, do I want to take my spare time and dedicate it to leopard geckos? And that can go into breeding any animal. Do you want to take your spare time and put it into animals? If the answer is yes, and you have an outlet, the very next thing you want to talk to yourself about or talk to your loved ones is I, I, how do I want to put it? Do you have the space? I don't want to put it, say that, you know, you got a, you know, a smaller house or an apartment, but do you have the space to produce what you want? Um, again, you can ask any breeder. We all started out with a corner of a room then it took over that room then it takes over basements and we get big barns insulated barns or get a retail outlet <clears throat> and we're producing that way we have a facility here and that's how it starts i mean i have dart frogs right here in my office so um you want to you got to have the space you do you got to have space for the geckos you're gonna buy, you're gonna to have to have space for growth. You gotta think ahead a little bit because once you hit the max capacity, then you got the hard decision of what 
are you going to stop producing? What morph are you going to stop producing? What projects are you going to sell off? And so forth. It happens to us all. But space is going to be a huge thing. So that kind of goes into the housing. <clears throat> the very first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to figure out what type of animals you want to produce. So you answer the question, you have outlets, you have a plan there, you have time and you have space. So now what I'm going to tell you before you go out and buy your racks, before you buy the rest of the stuff on this list, what I'm going to tell you to do is research animals, research different leopard geckos and find out which ones that you like. The reason I'm going to tell you to breed what you like is you're going to be able to sell them very easier than if you breed something that everyone else is breeding or you see them selling better because you're not into them animals your passion isn't into them animals you want to breed what you like so if you like rainwater albino i say start with rainwater albino if you like bell albino start with bell albino if you just like eclipse or marble eye or anything of anything any orange geckos yellow geckos you name it you breed what you like and when you breed what you like you're going to be able to produce animals that you like and you're going to be able to sell them and talk with passion about them and that's a big key so you're going to want to find out what kind of projects you're going to go go with and so you know the time you have you know the space you have now you know the animals that you're going to go after you're going to you're going to go after these certain animals now what we're going to do the rest of this video is we're going to Pretend that you're going to get three females and one male. All right, it's just going to be easier going forward. You can multiply any of my advice and you can go bigger or go smaller. You can go 1.1, which is one male, one female. We're going to go 1.3, which is one male, three females. So <clears throat> the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to have to find housing for them for leopard geckos. Now, a breeder like me, I usually keep two to three animals in a 32 quart tub is how most breeders do it most of my animals are kept two to a 32 quart tub now the reason i do two is i like more controlled breeding now very special projects i keep one female to one male and the males aren't housed with them females at all times they have their own tub it's only for breeding purposes so very very specific breeding that i'm going for i'm going to have one female per tub and the other animals like my raptor group i have three raptors in a 32 quart tub and most of my like i got my some of my snow groups in twos i have some radars in twos and it seems to work pretty well with me now the more animals you have in a tub the more cleaning you're going to have to do more frequently should i say so we're going to pretend that you're going to do one female per tub all right and then you're going to be doing a male in his own tub you're going to be taking that male and you're going to be putting him in when with the females when it comes time to breed which we'll get into more later <clears throat> later in another episode of breeding so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be looking for like a 32 a 28 quart rack probably a five slot and you're going to give each female their own slot and the male its own slot now that leaves an open slot not a big deal you can add another female you can just leave it there for extra it doesn't matter you're going to be looking for a five slot rack now if you're wanting one of the people that would like to breed in aquariums or terrariums <clears throat> that is totally 100 percent fine you're going to want to just do that same same process you're going to need four terrariums to produce these animals in or to breed these animals in so that's just the caging you're going to either need you know four terrariums or five slot rack now the heating element of this is <clears throat> i like belly heat for all my leopard geckos i think they do better with belly heat but i know tons of people that use back heat and do just fine but either way on rack systems you're going to need heat tape heat tape and a thermostat a thermostat i use one thermostat per rack that's just the way I am. It's a safety precaution. I don't care if the, the thermostat can do more. I just like one thermostat per rack and that's it. Um, and then I measure the temp in the back with the thermostat. And I also have another temp gauge per rack. That's a very inexpensive um, item. You can get them for like $10. And they're within a 0.2 degrees of the thermostat at all times. So... <clears throat> excuse me i got a cough 
But anyways, so you're going to want to have in a racks, you're going to want to have heat tape and a thermostat. And if you want that extra um, thermometer for temps, just have that nice backup. Now in your terrariums, you're not going to want to heat tape the run under. You're going to want to heat mat under each one of them um, tanks. The reason is belly heat seems to be better for these animals than side heat. Um, and that's the way I feel. Now, does leopard geckos need light? I'm a firm believer that no, they do not need UVA, they do not need UVB, but I do turn on the lights in the room every morning and I turn them off at night. <clears throat> can you put a light on your leopard geckos? You sure can. I recommend very low wattage soft lights. I do not like when you put 100 watt light bulbs on leopard geckos because they are not diurnal, they do not come out during the day, they just don't like them bright lights. So. I tell people if you're going to light it, use a soft light, do something like maybe uh, maybe a 60 watt, maybe even a 40 watt bulb, just enough so you can see the animal if it is out. Um, all right, so we have hit now heating <clears throat> and caging. And it's your choice. There's nothing wrong with going with terrariums and there's nothing wrong with going with rack systems. The thing with rack systems is you can put more geckos in less space, less space because you can go floor to ceiling. Terrariums take up more space. Um, and they're a little harder to heat. They're a little harder to keep humidity in without you know putting a glass piece up, the ventilation, blah, blah, blah. Ventilation is a very big thing that people don't think leopard geckos need, but even in rack systems, you got to give them ventilation. You put holes in them tubs. If you don't, you're asking for trouble. So the very next thing that I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is you're, you have the, the racking or the caging for the animals. What you're going to need for sure is a bunch of moist hides, even in the terrariums. And in the rack system, you need moist hides because the females are going to need somewhere to lay their eggs. The moist hides can be a Tupperware dish with moist cocoa fiber in it, with a lid, with a hole cut in on top. Do not cut the hole on the side. The cocoa fiber will be everywhere. Cocoa fiber will be everywhere with the hole on the top, but not as much. So that will be a solid moist hide. Now, I do not use substrate in any of my tubs except for paper towel. I use paper towel. It's very quick to change. Leopard geckos tend to go to the bathroom in the same corner or the same side of the cage, no matter what. And it makes it very, very easy for me to clean. Now, if you wanted to use like a reptile carpet or a tile or something like that, it seems to do good. I do not like putting leopard geckos on sand or even cocoa fiber as a main substrate. Even though I do feed in dishes, which we'll get to in a minute, <clears throat> I still don't like to do it. Um, I think too much humidity can damage their toes. I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, after the years I've been breeding leopard geckos, I found no substrate or paper towel seem to do better with them than a full-on substrate, especially when you're breeding at a high level and you can't give each and every one of the animals 20 to 30 minutes every single day. It's more of a quick inspection move on to the next <clears throat> so now we got your moist hide we know what substrate now I'm a big firm believer in too that misting should not be sent away because you give a water dish I think leopard geckos drink more from misting than they ever will from a water dish I have seen this personally that you know, missed them they drink from the sides of the wall that's why it's important to keep them clean but you can still offer a water dish. You can still offer a water dish. I see people say, if you miss, don't offer a water dish. Offering a water dish never do it hurts. It, it doesn't. Um, but the one problem with breeding that a lot of breeders will tell you is if you offer a water dish and that substrate for some reason isn't right for them, they'll lay the eggs in the water dish. I've seen it happen many, many times. So a lot of breeders will take the water dishes away from their gravid females and miss daily to replace that so the eggs don't get laid in the water dish. <clears throat> now, I will tell you, I've had eggs laid in water dishes. I've had eggs laid outside of boxes, even when I think that the, the uh, moist hide is perfect. I've had them laid outside. I get in there and I'm like, oh, there's eggs outside of the dish. But 90% of the time, it's going to be in for legs. And the other 10% of the time, you're going to lose them eggs unless you get to them right away and you can incubate them. And we'll get that to that in a later episode also. 
So off in a water dish is totally 100% fine. Now, again, here is my opinion. I'm a firm believer in offering mealworm dishes. I am a mealworm um, feeder. I like mealworms. I hate crickets. I do not like feeding crickets to leopard geckos. That does not mean that you cannot feed crickets to leopard geckos. I'm just a firm believer that mealworms and dubia roaches are so much better supplement than anything else. I've fed leopard geckos hornworms. Um, all different red runners, um, dubias, you name it. I have fed it to them. I do not like crickets. Mealworms, superworms do wonderful. They are excellent. And you can take, I take mealworms and I just throw them in my breeder tanks and they eat what they want. Um, I'm not joking. That's how I do it. Now the babies, <clears throat> now babies that we'll get into when we talk about baby setup. But babies, I would not throw in a bunch of mealworms when they're first born. It just is not a good idea. We'll get to that later. So now we got the moist hide for the egg layer, egg laying. We have the water dish, the substrate that we talked about, and we talked about your mealworm dish or your food dish for the animals. Now, sometimes you want to have a second hide. All my dishes act as caves. I use these like I don't know how to explain them other than cat dishes. They can get under, so that's a cool side hide. I get tons of animals hiding under them. And the moist hide is in the warmer end because I need that to be warmer because for shed and for eggs. I don't want them laying the eggs and they being 70 degrees, 70, 75 degrees, and I don't get to them for a day. Because there's some days I can't get down there in the morning. I don't want that. So I want that moist hide to be around in the mid 80s and, it, and I'll get to it later. Um, that's just my preference. It works out great for me. <clears throat> so now that we got the adults set up, you guys got um, the rack set up, you're ready to go. Now you're going to be jumping back into another thing, the babies. The baby rack is what you're going to be wanting to fill up. But remember, every female leopard gecko is going to give you anywhere from 6 to 20 eggs. I've seen more than 20 eggs. I've seen less than 6 eggs. But somewhere between 6 and 20 is average. Now everyone's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I have females give me 18 eggs all the time. I've, ha I've had females give me 26 eggs. No joke. I've had females give me 6 eggs. So you have to plan for that average. So with 3 females, I say you're looking at maybe around 40 babies, give or take. If you don't get 40 babies, okay. If you get more than 40 babies, okay. But that's what I say. You're looking at around 12 babies, give or take. That's 36, but that's why I say 40. So around 36. 36 to 40. So you're going to want to have baby space for this. And six quart baby racks work great. You can get yourself a 36 slot or 38 slot pretty cheap these days. I, I got some of mine for $150 online um, uh, on one of the Facebook groups. Uh, but they can run up to $600 to $700. You're going to need a way to heat them with a thermostat. Um, but you need a way to house the babies. You cannot count on them selling before they hatch. So you don't know what's going to sell first. So always prepare to have the housing first. Now the only cool thing about it is, is geckos go in waves. You're going to get two eggs at a time every two to three weeks. So it's not going to be 40 babies at one time. <clears throat> and then you can sell your baby geckos when they're about 15 grams. But again, that's something that we're going to get into later. But you can set up the baby racks almost identical to the adult racks, except I give them a styrofoam hide and then I give them paper towel with their two bowls and I mist them down. That's what I do. And they grow very quickly. I give them mealworms, I give them dubias. They grow, I mean, they're 15 to 20 grams within, I mean, 15 grams, I would say in three to four weeks. Um, very quick growers. Leopard geckos grow quick. Um, so that is something that you got to think of. You got to think of that beforehand and you got to get them racks. Or if you're going to go terrariums, you need around. I would say 30, 40 trainers ready to go. That's why rack systems work so much better, especially for babies. Now we've gone over what you need for the baby's cages and the adult cages. The other things that we're going to do, we're going to make into a part two of this. And we're going to post the part two maybe tomorrow or Friday. Because I am already at 20 minutes. So the rest of the stuff is we're going to be talking about the supplies that you need to go ahead and 
move forward with the leopard gecko stuff like your water bottles and, and your spray bottles and your and your cocoa fibers and all this other good stuff and the incubators and the vermiculite and all that good stuff so we're going to make that a part two i didn't know this was going to go this long but we are going to get into the meat and potatoes i promise you i promise you so guys thank you for watching we'll see you the next time